So guys, this is a happy second day of summer, um, Wednesday, June 22nd. Um, it's getting hot outside and so are we. We are, uh, our, our sales are going up as the mercury rises. So does our production. Guys, um, I wanna just say, say a quick, start this off with a great congratulations. Um, I can't remember a time when we've had a higher percentage of people that had their quarterly VPFs completed um, and, and in um, by, I mean, first, second day of the quarter, second, third day of the quarter. Um, had one or two straggle in yesterday and they were mainly just people that kind of needed help, didn't, didn't quite understand it, were newer. Actually, in all fairness, they didn't have the link uh, so they had, had stuff written down, but couldn't, you know, hadn't figured out quite how to save it and all that good stuff yet. So guys, if that's your, if you're ch technically challenged, you're going to fit right in, in these two, in these organizations, at least in mine. So um, just ask for some help. Um, we can get it for you. Um, but uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today, and, and again, there's one or two people I know in our group that we're still, uh, we're going to get those in today and help those folks, but make sure if you don't have them done, guys, let's get those done. Um, because again, it's it's really hard to get to a destination you've never been before if you don't have some kind of a map, okay? Whether it's, um, you know, a fancy app on your phone that tells you how to get there or just a good old fashioned atlas. For those of you guys that are over the age of like 35, you might remember what an atlas is. It's a big old, like a book that you open it up and it's got the United States in there and it's got every state you can turn to it. That's how we used to get out to our territory on the book field uh, with a big old piece of paper. So, um, but guys, uh, your goals, that is your, that's your roadmap, okay? And so guys, a lot of you guys have done a wonderful job of creating and putting together your goals. Now, what I wanna talk to you guys today, um, a big mistake. So we talk about vision, VPF, right? What, VPF stands for what, guys? What are the three parts of that? Vision, vision plan, plan Thank you. Vision, plan, and follow through. So, guys, the vision is just the idea of, hey, I want to go. I want to go to California. Okay. Probably better get a little more specific because California is a big state. I want to go to San Francisco. Okay. The uh, plan is putting it down on paper. Okay. W deciding the dates. Getting specific. Right. Smart. Uh, specific. When is this trip going to happen? Who's going to go? Right. Um, is it time bound? When's it going to happen? Right. And then getting a map and figuring out how to get there, assuming you're, you're driving. It's going to be a long drive, but you can drive there. Um, guys, the last part is follow through. If you have a map and you look at it at the beginning of your trip and then you just throw it in the glove box and you never pull it back out, unless you've got a photographic memory, you, you might get lost. You might get on I-40 going east and go, hey, this, this, I mean, it's even west. This west is going west. You know, at the end of the day, the sun's setting in my face, so I know I'm going west. But if you're on I-40, you're not going to end up in San Francisco. You're going to end up in Barstow, California. That's where it ends. It, it ends on one end in Wilmington, North Carolina by Todd and Zach and Josiah and those guys. The other end is Barstow, California. It's like 2,500 miles long. Um, there's actually a sign outside of Wilmington as you're leaving on 40 that says Barstow, California, 2,554 miles right down the road. Um, so, um, but you got to look at that map. OK, to make sure that you're on the right little roads along the way. OK, guys, us looking at our goals throughout the quarter and tracking our goals, that is how we um, that's how we stay on track. So, guys, what I want to talk to you about guys, about is this is how you track your goals. And I, I've got uh, a couple screenshots here pulled up that I'm going to use here in just a moment. And I know some of you guys are looking at my screen uh, going, how does he keep up with everything? Well, I, I don't, but I do it. I try. So um, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Well, good. Well, then you're That's not seeing, you're not seeing the mess that is my screen just yet. Perfect. Glad to hear that. Um, so thanks for sharing that, Josiah, too. That would have been I could have gone the whole time thinking I was sharing my screen when I wasn't. So let me do that first. And so what I want to share with you guys, again, this is um, the VPF. OK, and let's assume that this Per here, hat. let me go over to, all right, personal, okay? So once you have numbers plugged in here, guys, the next step is once your week is over. So this is week one of the quarter, guys. And guys, we all kind of know when our week is going to end. For some of us, it's going to end at 5.30 p.m. on Friday. We're going to be done. That's it. We're going to the beach for the weekend. We're not doing any more work and we're done. So that means sometime after Friday at 5 p.m., 
you can go ahead. It could be it could be right at 5.30 p.m. It could be Saturday morning when you get up if you want to just kind of have it done with your coffee. But you need to go in here and look at your actual numbers. So you need to go over, go over to the stat site, look at your totals for the week, okay? It's real simple. And then you plug in, hey, how many hours did I really put in? Hey, my goal this week was 45. I put in 46. I'm actually an hour ahead of, my, of schedule. I'll tell you down here, see that little green one? That means you're an hour ahead of schedule. If you put in 44 hours, then that would mean you have a negative one. You're one hour behind, you know, going into the second week. Guys, an hour is pretty easy to make up, right? You can make that up in the very next week by just putting in 46 hours instead of the 45. So if you know, you can catch that pretty quickly because if you're going to hit your numbers, you're going to need, you're going to hit your goals, right? If you've used your metrics and you know exactly how many demos it takes to make those sales and how many hours it takes to get those demos, number one thing is go get the hours. Go put in the hours and you're going to get the demos based on your current skill level, okay? Of course, hopefully during the course of the quarter, you level up and get a little bit better and develop some skills <clears throat> more, but this will help you. Tracking yourself. Okay, hey, my goal was 30 demos man, I only got in 26. Okay, that's fine. You're four behind. Okay. But guys, if you don't know that, right, and you don't make up those four either next week or over the next couple of weeks, um, what's going to happen is you don't track. Let's say you're four behind every week. Guys, what's four times 13? That's 52, right? Guys, if you are 52 demos shy of your goal, that's basically like taking off two full weeks. OK, that's 26 demos times two weeks. That's like taking two weeks off. OK, it's not intended. Right. And we didn't take those two weeks off in a really cool uh, beach town. We didn't go across the country. We didn't go to San Francisco. We just took those two weeks of vacation in our car, hanging out, looking at social media, being you know, not quite um, not quite being focused on what we're doing. And guys, those kind of vacations aren't that fun. Because we, we end up, those vacations, you know, we take them about 30, 30 to 45 minutes at a time throughout the course of any, any normal day, but they add up to be a, a vacation. The problem is, is we spend that time um, not, not having a great time, not having fun, and actually thinking about that we should be working. So um, if we stay really on track and stay focused throughout the day, <clears throat> it, um, yeah, helps us stay on track and we can, we can actually do better and afford to go do a, do a fun vacation. So um, of course, you want to plug in your premium. Now, you can plug in your premium, guys, on the, when, as soon as you're done. Like, let's say that you sold $5,000 of premium for the week, okay? But guys, what, what sometimes happens, you know, when the numbers come out the following Tuesday, what sometimes happens to that number that we sold gross last week? Cancellations. Yeah, sometimes there's a cancellation might happen, and that number might decrease, Okay. Sometimes that happens where there's a policy that was uh, post dated previously and we put it in and we may have forgotten and, and the number increases a little bit, but the number, that number can change a little bit. Okay. And in most cases, it'll, in, it'll more times than not, it'll decrease more than it'll increase because you, we do have canceled issues as part of our business. Normal canceled issues about 10%. So what might you, you what you might see the next Tuesday is that the 5,000 that you sold actually turned into about 4,522 because you had, a, uh, a $478 app cancel. And that's okay, but that's what you want, guys. Remember, we sell gross, we get paid on uh, on uh, net. So you're, you're interested in net annualized premium. You don't earn the trip by selling 45,000 gross, right? You, get, you, you earn the trip by selling 45,000 for the quarter net, right? And if you're gonna have a 10% cancel at issue, that means you need to sell 45,000 plus about 10%, right? So plus 4,500, which would be about 49,500. Then you can have 10% canceled issue and you're still at 45,000. Does that make sense? Perfect. Um, I'm gonna assume everyone's saying yes, you're just on mute. Uh, so again, career overviews, uh, how many did you do? Oh man, I didn't do any last week, okay? Well, guys, we need to recognize that if we if we goal set to do two and we did zero, well, guess what? We got two to make up. So um, that should little light a fire under our butt because if we don't have any, we're not going to have a team, right? So tracking ourselves, how many referrals did I get? Well, my goal set was to have 20 referrals 
Um, I got 12. All right, well, I know I need to pick up the pace a little bit. Or maybe, hey, I got 27. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. You know, I was behind on a couple other things, but I'm ahead on my goal with, uh, with referrals. So guys, and little things like that, guys, catching ourselves doing things right. It's stopping. We're all our worst critic. Stopping and giving ourselves a little pat on the back. Hey, great job, man. You, you beat your referral goal last week. Let's keep that going. Okay. But guys, using it to track throughout the quarter. Okay. And again, all the... Every number except for your net, net premium, that's determined as soon as your week stops. Because as soon as you decide you're done, again, whether it's 5.30 on Friday or whether it's 2.30 on, on Saturday afternoon or whatever, that's when you're done. That's when you're done with your hours and you're done with your demos. Go ahead and plug them in. That way you know, okay? You can go ahead and plug in what you sold gross if you want to, but know that on Tuesday, that number may shift a little bit. OK, so there's probably two times a week that we ought to be checking out our quarterly VPF, guys. Um, once again, is when you're done with your work for the week, right? Sometime in the next 24 hours of being done. And then again is on Tuesday. And we need to plug these numbers in and know where we are. And it'll tell us we're either going to be ahead of schedule or we're going to be behind schedule. If it's if you're ahead, you're going to see a little green box. If you're behind, it's going to be white and it's going to have a, a minus sign in front of it. OK, so just a little bit on tracking ourselves <clears throat> throughout the quarter, guys, because, again, if we don't track, we could end up in a very different destination than we ended up in. OK, nobody wants to go vacation in Barstow, California. I mean, who wants to go there? Lots of people want to go to San Francisco or L.A. OK, so make sure that you end up in, the, in a desired place. Guys, any questions about how to track yourself? during the quarter. It's pretty important. Okay, shifting gears, guys. We're going to take a look here now at our, um, want to make, be really clear on using our metrics. Okay, guys, if you're brand new to our business, if you've been here less than a quarter, um, you don't really have enough data to have metrics to really set your watch by. You will after about six to eight weeks, you'll kind of know where you are. But at the beginning, um, your contract's going to be 30% on the front, 1% renewal on the back. So 30 here, 0 0.09 here. Um, your average transaction size, just put 900, okay? We'll see what that is, but average is about 900, okay? When you're newer, that typically after a few months comes up to closer to 1,000. If you're doing the job the right way, if you're calling on people that do have money, um, it's fine to call on the dollar trees out there in your first month or so, but after that, guys, it's time to move away from hourly waged people. Those will, those will bring high cancellations and you want to call on people that are on salaries. Okay. So <clears throat> if you've been here more than two, three months and you're still calling on mostly people that make hourly wages, your uh, a, a to T ratio or your stick rate on your coverage on your policies is probably going to be lower. And that will um, that can impact your your lifetime renewal source. So be sure you're calling on people, and that takes a higher skill level. So we got to be leveling up to make sure that we're calling on people that might not be willing to listen, but they they'll be willing to listen if our skills up up is higher. But they're able to buy. Okay, straight from the common denominator success, guys. Closing percentage. If you don't know, if you don't haven't been here a full quarter, just use uh, use sixteen percent is closing. That's one out of every six. That's what the average new, new agent does in their first couple of months. This agent's been here about a few more months than that. It's at 24%. And then your hour to demo ratio, guys, ideal is going to be 1.5. Okay. Ideal is going to be 1.5. So 1.6, 1.7, as you can see this person here, there's this 2.15. And you're going to see that that's going to, it's going to lead to a higher number of hours than this person's probably going to want to work. Now having a higher uh, closing percentage will help offset that a little bit, but um, you'll kind of see here in a minute. So guys, once you've figured all that out, then you want to go in here and the, once you've got those, the, those plugged in, then all you got to do is go in here and look at each week and look at your cash flow needed, or guys, you might even trade out the word need with want, okay? Um, because needs and wants are very different. You know, our needs are only going to push us so far. Our wants and desires will push us long after our needs are met. So if you're only goal setting to just get by and pay your bills with zero extra, that's kind of like, that's kind of drudgery. Most of us could probably pay our bills working at McDonald's uh, as long as we had enough hours, okay? Uh, depending on your bill situation. But guys, this is a bit, this is a business that you're building. 
um, it is, um, it's meant for great things. So if you, um, let's say this person needs $500, okay? $500 that week for saving student loan payments, okay? Well, based on metrics, this person needs 2,083 in sales. Based on an average transaction of 878, they need 2.4 transactions or three, because of course you can't, you can't do 0.4 of a transaction. Based on closing 24%, this person needs 10 demos and they're gonna need 21 hours to do it, 20, okay? Also, again, shows over here, remember that the actual wealth created, kind of our hidden wealth in our business, the total commissions are, you know, even though 500 is going in the account, this agent's actually making 1,058. That's 683 of total first year commissions. Remember that 500 is just your first 60% of your first year, basically a seven month advance. The other five months is coming. And when it does, that, that amount minus cancellations, it's gonna be a total of 683. There'll be a $375 paid out over the next 19 years in renewals on that week's business for a total of 1,058. So guys, that's uh, understanding the metrics. Now, when we take those, those metrics, we, and then we plug them in um, over here. Oh, excuse me, that's, that's not the right one. This is the right one. So <clears throat> this is that same, um, that same agents. Um, actually, let me, here we go. Let me make this about half the size of the screen. And the other one, There we go. I want to do a split screen on this. Efforting here, guys, just efforting. All right, here we go. Move that there. Move this over here. So, guys, on this, um, so this is the same, the, the same agent here. Hopefully, you guys can see this. But over here, again, you see some metrics over here. You see 24% um, closing. You see 2.5. So, again, this agent... Um, and this is a bit of a trick question, but guys, I want you to help me find there's a bit of a mistake in here. And it's, it's a pretty common one that's made sometimes. So we did all this work over here on metrics. Now, this person said, you know, in week one, I'm not going to go do, I'm not going to, you know, work 21 hours. That's ridiculous. I can do more than that. I'm going to work, I'm going to work at least 40 hours. I mean, I am a full time, this is my business for crying out loud. So this agent said you're going to work 40 hours. Well, let me ask you something. If a person works 40 hours, how many demos can they, can they plan to get in if their hour to demo ratio is 2.15? The answer to that question, guys, is simply figured out by taking 40 hours and dividing it by 2.15. And so we're all not just sitting here in silence. I'll do the, I'll do the math. So um, if you take 2.15, and divide that into 40, guys, what you get is 18.6, okay? So this person is saying, all right, well, I know I get a demo every 2.5 hours, but I'm gonna work 40 hours, and then those 40 hours, I'm gonna get 25 demos. Well, how is that possible if you get a demo every two hours, 2.15 hours, right? You're really only gonna be able to get 18.6. So what you got to figure out, this person needs to figure out is what's more important, the demos and the results that come from those demos, or is working 40 hours more important? Because if the, if the person says, ah, 40 hours is the most important thing, and whatever I can get done in that amount of time, I'm going to be satisfied with it, okay? That's fine. This person, just, this person could be inadvertently setting themselves up for disappointment, when they put in 40 hours and stop and think, hey, I did my job, but they end up with 18 or 19 demos and they end up with an app, an app or two shy and, a, and about a thousand hours shy of their goal that they plugged in here. Let me ask you this guys, one person do the math on me. How many hours would it really take for this person to get 25 demos? You guys have calculators on your phones too. You can do this math. 53.75. Thank you, Josiah. I appreciate that. Guys, anybody know how Josiah got that? He just took the, the demo goal and multiplied it times the amount of hours it takes for to get a demo, which is 2.15. So 25 times 2.15 is exactly what Josiah said, 53.75. So in all fairness, if this agent really wants to get 40, 25 demos, 
he or she needs to plan on working 53 hours and 45 minutes, 53.75 hours, okay? Now, if he or she can get it done earlier than that, then hey, cool, knock off. But 25 demos for this person is probably gonna lead um, to, um, you know, based on that, cl that closing percentage of closing 24%, uh, that's one out of five, it's gonna lead to five sales, okay? 878 of premium, Five times eight seventy eight is going to lead to, um, yeah, forty three hundred plus a premium. So that would help this this person would be able to hit their goal with that for sure. So guys, that again, I hope this isn't like confusing. Some of us are better naturally at numbers than others. That's okay. Here's what I want to challenge you: Don't sell yourself short. Don't tell yourself that bullshit story oh, I'm just not good at math, so I'm going to tune out and not learn this. Okay, guys, you own a business, okay? And if you don't understand the numbers in your business, who's going to understand it for you? That's right. That silence you heard, that's the answer. The answer is nobody. Nobody. Yeah, <laughs> nobody. Now, you might have a trainer or manager or an agency owner that'll help you with it, but guys, that's all we can do is we can do it with you. We can't do it for you. Um, it takes some time to do this. It takes some repetition. And guys, all of you that, are, that, that, that have closed, everybody who's on here, you've closed a sale before. Guys, there was a time where you had never closed a sale before, and now you're doing it. So you learned. There was a time in your life when you couldn't walk and you couldn't talk. And to do what we do, really, truly, you need to be able to do both of those. And all of you on here can do both of those things. So you've proven that you can learn things when it's important to you and, and um, when you uh, put your mind to it. So just want to challenge you guys on that. I'll, I'll pause for a second. But guys, any, anybody have any questions about anything I covered right there? I know it's kind of some high-level stuff, but I just want to make sure that, guys, if we're going to go and take the time to plug to work and create metrics, right? Create closing percentages and create hour to demo ratios. Let's just make sure that once we take our numbers from over here, we figure out our cash flow and then we plug in our activity over here. Let's make sure that we don't just ignore the metrics when we plug them in. If we're gonna, if you got a two, you know, if, let's just say that's, if you got a 2.15 hour to demo ratio, let's be real with ourselves. If you wanna get 25 demos, just understand that again, you're gonna need to put in 53 hours, uh, 53.75 hours, okay? Know that going in, that's 14 extra hours, okay? Um, it's an extra, basically three hours a day that that would take. So figure out, is it more important to hit that goal and get the demos that it takes to get that goal? Or is it more important to hit the hours and be satisfied with whatever you can get done within those hours? Guys, I would submit that if, if you make the goal more important than the hours, You'll work extra hours right now. It'll be uncomfortable. You won't like it a lot of the times, and that's that's fine. But if you're willing to do it on the front end, you're willing to run into the storm instead of from it, you'll come out on the other end a lot faster. You'll develop your skill level a lot faster, and you'll get uh, to where your closing percentage will increase. You'll figure out how to get a demo every hour and a half, or at least bring that down to 1.6 or 1.7, okay? Because, guys, I'll tell you what, it's kind of fun when you get it down because look at this person, it's at 2.15. Imagine if it was 1.6, a demo every 1.6 hours, this person would be able to get 25 demos in just 40 hours. Magic, pretty cool, huh? But guys, any questions on anything that we covered right there before we wrap up? Or comments of, of, of leaders, any, any comments of anyone that's have used their metrics and can back up anything that I've shared today to kind of reinforce it. It's pretty awesome. If you work the numbers right it, uh, and, and enter your stats correctly, it's always uh, very helpful to see where you're at every week. Really is. Thank you, Avery, for sharing that. Um, yeah, it's just super, super important. I mean, you can pretty much take any goal that you want to <laughs> obtain in the business and if you know the numbers, you can work it backwards to know exactly how many demos you needed to make, X amount of dollars if you want to make, 
work X amount of hours and you know exactly how many demos you need to do to still make that, that money or, or whatever it is that you're trying to hit. It's um, you can work the numbers backwards in this business and have the exact roadmap that you uh, need to do to hit your goals. So it's really awesome stuff. Thank you, Josiah. Yeah, that the term for what Josiah was saying is reverse engineering. It's just taking what you want the end goal to be, whatever that income is, and then back it up to families protected, back it up to demos needed, back it up to hours needed. And then you know, hey, I just need to go to work X amount of hours and I can get that done. And guys, it's pretty empowering when you know um, that, yep, if I go put in X amount of effort, I'm going to get X amount of results. And that will happen over time uh, as you're here. So stay the course, ask for some help with this. And uh <clears throat> and watch your business grow. It's amazing. Guys, I'm going to end up on this note here. Uh, yesterday on our leadership Zoom, we had a very, very special guest speaker, um, Dylan Buck, and he got on and he really talked to us for, whew, um, it went about an hour. It was, but it, we just, we couldn't stop because it was just too good. Um, but he talked to a lot of what he talked to about was his purpose. And he said that, um, I've actually got my, my notes right here. He said that our endurance in anything is in direct proportion with the clarity of our vision. Again, I'll say that again. Our endurance of anything is in direct proportion with the clarity of our vision. I hope you write that down, guys. Um, that's why, guys, it's so important to have a vision of what we want to accomplish, okay? Dylan's a huge fan of the vision board. And actually, I just learned yesterday you can do it on a uh, there's a there's an online app that you can use called Procreate, the Procreate app, and I downloaded that. And I'm going to try when I do my next new vision board. It's going to be done virtually. God help me. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure out a way to screw it up, but I will. Uh, but I'm going to give it a go, and I'm going to call Dylan if, if I screw it up and get some help. <clears throat> um, but guys, I want to end on this note here. Just talk to you a little bit about vision. I'll go into some of the stuff that was shared with us because that, that's a whole nother Zoom. But I want to share with you guys the story of three bricklayers. Um, it's a multifaceted parable uh, with many uh, different variations. Let me let me stop the uh, stop the screen share and just go full screen with you guys. Um, so it's but it's rooted in a very authentic story. After the Great Fire of 1666 that leveled London, uh, the world's most famous architect uh, Christopher Wren was commissioned to rebuild St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, one day in 1671. Wren observed three bricklayers on a scaffold, one crouched, one half standing, and one standing tall, working very hard and fast. To the first bricklayer, Christopher Wren asked the question, what are you doing? To which the bricklayer replied, I'm a bricklayer. I'm working hard, laying brick to feed my family. Uh, the second bricklayer responded, I'm a builder. I'm building a wall. The third bricklayer, the most productive of the three and the future leader of that group, when asked the same question, what are you doing? Replied with a gleam in his eye, I'm a cathedral builder. I'm building a great cathedral to the almighty. Um, online, you'll find many variations of this story, <clears throat> but each version tells of three people working on the same wall, doing the same work, but with totally different perspectives. From this story, many analogies and applications can be drawn. Some of these include the importance of uh, and I hope you again, I hope you'll write these down. Big picture thinking, attitude, and connection to the organization's mission. Big picture thinking, being able to see the end result and how your work contributes to that end. As we call that connecting the dots. When you can connect the dots with how doing six demos today will help you end up on that, that trip to Hawaii with your family <clears throat> at the end of the summer, then you'll do it. OK, when you can connect the dots with how getting out of your car and not spending more than five minutes in it can help you earn that awesome trip to Puerto Rico where it's all inclusive and free and all that stuff for you and your spouse and significant other, <clears throat> you'll get out a lot quicker. Attitude, a positive attitude and pride in what you're doing will show up in your work and your motivation and connection to the organization's mission. Uh, employees who are rightly connected to the organization's mission, vision, values, and goals are happier, more engaged, and more productive. Guys, I would encourage you guys, if you haven't been on the uh, Protect One Family website lately, hop on there and check out our mission statement. Check out our vision statement. Check out our core values video. Same with Schneider agencies. And make sure that 
make sure that that still resonates with you because that's that still resonates with us. While these applications are true and insightful, I find um, this story has another potential application, and it's the power of purpose. And I'll end on this. The story of the three bricklayers is also a metaphor on the power of purpose, where the cathedral builder demonstrates a personal expression of purpose <clears throat> that transforms his attitude and gives a higher meaning to his work. Another term for purpose we use in the ministry circles is calling. For this bricklayer, building the wall, for the first bricklayer, building the wall was his job. For the second bricklayer, it was his occupation. But for that third bricklayer, it was his calling. A calling reflects our universal need to matter, to influence, to make a difference in the world around us. Viktor Frankl made this clear in his book, The Meaning of Life. He wrote about how some people survived the Holocaust, but so many didn't. One of the things he identified was those who had a purpose or a reason to continue to live that was beyond themselves tended to survive. But guys, that's why we say we'll do for others what we won't do for ourselves, right? That's why you have someone that's been around for a while that's, you know, having a challenge, not, not really making it out there. Hey, put someone in the car with them. They got to go to work. They'll make it happen. They'll do for others what they may not do for themselves. <clears throat> While those who are focused primarily on themselves did not. Uh, those who survived found some meaning in their painful circumstances. The meaning they found uh, was, was in caring for and helping others in this horrible experience. The story of the three bricklayers can also be used to illustrate the responsibility of leaders to encourage others to find their cathedral, to help and support others in pursuing and building their cathedral. We are uniquely created by God for a specific purpose at a particular time in history that no one else can fulfill but us. As church leaders, we need to wrestle, this is someone writing to it, we need to wrestle with the question, how do I move people from where they are to being cathedral builders? How do I help people discover their God-given purpose at each juncture in life's journey and, res and, and, resource them, and resource them to live it out? We need to recognize that God didn't make anybody just to be a bricklayer, okay? God didn't make any of us just to be supplemental insurance salespeople, okay? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with laying brick and nothing wrong with selling insurance. But as Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. We should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. And guys, I would say that um, he should protect families well, so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth would pause and say, there's a person that protected families and did it with every ounce of their ability. <clears throat> and everything that they had. So guys, thanks for being on today. Um, I hope that uh, that helps you a little bit with your purpose and keeping your purpose in front of you. If you need some help with figuring that out, reach out and touch someone, we'll help out. But um, guys, when we figure that out, life becomes a lot simpler and, uh, and a lot sweeter. So thanks for being on today. Thanks for um, sticking around. Have a great first hump day of Q3. And guys, right now we're, we're on pace. Let's, uh, let's stay on that pace and let's track ourselves uh, throughout this quarter and see, uh, see the awesome results that come from it by the end. Have a great day, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. Thanks, right. man. Guys, you're welcome. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys.